Andrew's back. I'm back. I'm back from Vermont, from Maple Monastery in Vermont, for a conference with a bunch of people who are known in our networks. Benita Roy, Zach Stein. Um, it was it was Zach Zach and and Mark Gaffney's uh, conference on cosmoerotic humanism and they're right. working on a huge project uh, a huge writing project and they invited a bunch of people to talk about their their ideas which they call um generally they call cosmoerotic humanism so it was a cool place maple monastery is a it's a radically different type of monastery than i've been and i've spent time in zen monasteries before um it was interesting to see how what people are doing and what what crazy things people are doing in zen monasteries these days including some they're trying to they're trying to train ai systems um somehow by measuring the monks uh chanting and and uh breathing and i'm not sure if i understand what? how it works but they have this whole they have this whole program there that where they're trying to tr i guess train the ai system in some kind of a way in, in in kind of different principles of what they call wisdom and compassion so don't ask well, me to explain what that is because i don't understand well, it's it a all. chinese way of uh surveillance of of yeah it sounds like that surveillance huh? mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds a bit like that doesn't it sounds sounds very unusual but but uh there's to there monitor a, the breathing and the states of the yeah there were the monks were sitting and doing zazen meditation breathing and there were these right. little little um things in front of them uh, beeping every time they they chanted a word so they were trying to chant at a certain rhythm and train their chanting and then they were recording that and putting that um in the algorithm or 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 to try to train the ai train ai systems to do something or other um right, there's so an article uh, in the atlantic magazine about about uh, about it uh uh there's the, it, it came out this this month about the the main the head monk named shoryu and and his his radical plans so the big brother really is a ai right and so the K ai is masculine is what you're saying yeah well i guess they're they're really afraid Absolute that ai is that ai is punished huh they're really afraid that ai is going to uh you know um uh destroy the world so they want to they want to get it they want to create an ai that that doesn't destroy the world that actually teaches people to be something else like what um i guess it teaches them to be enlightened since there's Zen oh in. oh that's interesting something like that mm. well that will never happen what i don't know what's going to happen who knows what's <laughs> going to happen there's riots in the streets in paris the world is falling apart paris is burning paris is burning yes indeed yeah it is. because you know that movie right where the gay people fuck themselves to death that's called it's called paris is burning i haven't seen the movie <laughs> I know it's your type of movie more than mine, though. No, it's um, the French. It's the French. <laughs> oh, they're all gay. <laughs> yes, they're they're no, they're not gay. They're they're artistic. <laughs> they're artis autistic or artistic. What artistic. <laughs> That's not the same thing, Tom. If you didn't know already, gay and artistic are <laughs> not the same thing. Yeah. All right. And okay. they're fashionable too okay so but now they're riding in the streets yeah but i mean it's an interesting concept but I, I i don't know if i if i really understood it you know so no i don't either i'm sorry to bring up something but i was there and i was watching these monks measure sort of measure their they're, they're again again they're trying to do something high tech and and related to zen meditation in some kind of a way but but, so because uh, you have like these mind machines from the well, 90s and odds no, where you have you know, where you can control and you know bring yourself into the theta and beta states and whatnot something that, like well it reminded me a bit of the in Scientology they have something like that don't oh, they they have these machines that test your who you are and test you and test your mind and hmm. I'm, I want I mean I'm I didn't wondering. get a Scientology vibe there were there 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 are real cool people over there do you think you can hack I don't know what they're doing what do you think you can we can we can hack enlightenment hack enlightenment 
Yeah, well, you were trying to create in these AI machines to be enlightened beings. John John Ravicki was talking about that. He said, "Okay, well, if we have to train these things, train them to be enlightened, to become enlightened." <laughs> Whatever that, that means. Make, but that doesn't make any sense. Or does it? Well, I don't know because I don't know what enlightenment is. So Yeah, but that's what I mean. So do you think we can hack enlightenment by using some AI that it's so deeply attuned to the deep processes of our psyche that, you know, we will, you know, be able to, you know, uh, reach that kind of sublime state? Or do you think like oh, that's that's a very rare occurrence in human history if it ab actually happens? Yeah, you know, I think I, that I don't I think that we, I think yeah, that sounds very strange to me because that seems to me something that as you say is is entirely a a human project. But I could be wrong. I mean there are there are apparently R R R Ramana Maharishi's cow got enlightened. So maybe there's other beings that that get enlightened as well other than human beings. So so maybe if AIs become autonomous and and conscious and, and all that stuff then then either th 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 then they'll get they can get enlightened. I don't know. It's like the movie Ghost in the Shell. Have you seen that movie? Uh, Ghost in the Shell. It's, isn't isn't that with Scarlett Johansson? That's a remake, a modern remake right. of, of of the the classic sci-fi film where there's there's this you know it's called the um, what's it called? Uh, anyway, there's a, there's an autonomous the anime, AI. You that, mean the old anime thing? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the there's an autonomous AI that becomes intelligent and uh, and and escapes kind of the matrix and uh, and uh, and becomes in. Yeah, but Andrew, that's not what I mean. What I mean is, you know, I've I've read this, you know, this fascinating quote from I don't know what it was it, you know, um, Willem Reich or or Erich from one of these big kind of psychoanalysts. Uh, you know, from the beginning of the turn of the last century. And so they said to know, I, I mean, it's not an exact quote, but the gist of it was to know what you want. That's mm -hmm. a very rare psychological occurrence, you know, because all of these forces you have to contend with, you know, your subconscious things, you know, the environment you're in and to really bring it all together in one single stream of, ah, that's what I want. And not like in retrospect, like I wanted that, you know, this after after the fact uh, rationalization, I wanted mm -hmm. that. But to, to be in the moment, to know, to bring it all together, that's like a rare occurrence. And and I found that that thought very interesting. And so it's like to, because like enlightenment is like that, you know, to have, you know, a, a complete coherent, um way of interacting with the world and so that's so rare and i mean like millions and millions and millions of people of all kind of religions do that but it's like the people who actually achieved it th these are like very rare occurrences also and i was wondering mm -hmm. if this is like something that we can hack like by principle or if that by principle will never be achievable because it's just spontaneous emergence of some weird you know phenomenon yeah, well, there's 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 certain brain studies that are pe people are doing where they're they're trying to actually like, you know, there's certain states of meditation that people achieve after much effort, right? Uh, including one of the states is called the nothingness state, no thingness state, which isn't actually a state of will. It's not a state of wanting anything or, 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 or right. It's a st it's almost the opposite. It's like complete existential relief. <laughs> right the nothingness that you don't want anything you, you don't you don't need anything you, you're completely at, at peace with 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 what, what whatever arises however this is not enlightenment um uh it's it's a stage it's a stage before enlightenment so but they they found a way to kind of uh stimulate your brain to get you into that state um apparently it's so pleasurable that some some monks get into that state and they 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 they're perfectly happy just to sit under a tree and die because they don't need anything or want anything or um and there's a, there's a i think a famous zen monk who kind of he was in the state and he drowned koban chinaroshi because he just had no you know desires left oh um, that's the myth t telling by some disciples because their the teacher was getting drunk and drowning 
So you never know. Mm, I don't think he was drunk. <laughs> he was trying to save a girl, and he just he just kind of he just you know. But again, this is not really the fully enlightened state. It's sort of described as a state before the enlightened state. So some people get stuck in this state. It's like attachment to happiness. They get stuck in the nothing in this state. But I was thinking about this, and and there, if you can stimulate this through you know through the brain somehow, then what's the point in doing ten years of meditation to get to that state? Um, so, well, I don't know what, what, what people are going to be able to achieve through, through AI in terms of changing the mind or, or fix, or, you know, fixing the neurosis of the mind. But then there's also the 10 years that you do learning meditation and, you know, practicing and studying and, and, and you know, going off and, um, um, there's, there's the whole path. You just wipe it out and, and you can create instant enlightenment. But we had this discussion in the last Deep Future AI talk, and that was exa mm -hmm. exactly the question that I asked uh, Alex Ebert, that, you know, if you have a program, like, in, you know, in context of education, if you have a program, an AI, that's so deeply attuned to your deep processes that, that it feeds you the right information at the right time to the maximum effect. And so I was asking him if the whole struggle and the whole learning to learn isn't wiped out by that very process and isn't that d detrimental and yeah so exactly question, and so it wouldn't be wouldn't be wouldn't it be detrimental like for for an enlightenment ai process you know because huge if not all of the process ex you know consists of the pain of failing mm -hmm. exactly and, you so. have to work it's well i mean yeah the, that's the whole thing is that the work creates character you know um right. and and i guess i guess if you, if you got enlightened and you had no character then you could be you know you could be some kind of tyrant or you could be a ba an enlightened baby right um why would you want this i mean and, and really, why would why, you why, want why this? would you, i mean like even if that would work why would you have you know hordes of people not consuming anything just being enlightened like what what is that what what sick fantasy is that yeah it's well yeah it's it's a it's a it's a pretty sick fantasy it's a sick fantasy because it's kind of it's it's like a gnostic dualistic fantasy right which says that life itself is bad and everything in life is bad so you just want to get out of it as quickly as possible you know and be somewhere else i mean it's escapist you know, because life consists of wrestling with discomfort and pain and sorrow and melancholy and all of these things. And yeah. that's why the joyful experience can be joyful because In existence contrast is not, to, to, it, to suffering. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. Um, I agree. Uh, so I don't know what people are trying to achieve uh, to get people into different states where they're, you know, in better shape than they are. I mean, the, 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 the average human state is a pretty deplorable state. That's the problem, right? In some ways, isn't it? <laughs> it's an in-between state where we're neither this nor that. So I, in a way that the human being is something to be transcended. Yeah, but I don't the, know. That's, that's the point of enlightenment, but, but, um, but who decides that? Not, not, not discarded, but transcended. It seems to me to an awfully Californian project. You know, I mean, it's Vermont, but I mean, like the idea to, again, like, let's call it hack enlightenment, that that's so Californian, you know, it's like, but it's what well, that's Disneyland. Bringing technology in. And yeah, well, yeah, I mean, that, that's not what they were up to at this monastery. It was a Zen right. monastery. So that they were doing, they were doing serious meditation practices and solitary retreats and right chanting and you know they were doing what monks do but but somehow that there was there was some reason that they wanted to um they wanted to let's say uh, uh g cr change the the way that ai has constructed the prompts and, and all that and so that ai will will enhance human intelligence rather than let's say extract human energy and turn us even more you know stupid and dumb and uh consumerists of 
garbage that we already are, right? So, right. I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, it's like, again, I think it's a state of consciousness that you can achieve where you know, I mean, that's, you know, the, the notion of, I mean, I was thinking about this, this, this notion of, you know, a meta crisis, a time between worlds, you know, all these kinds of social anxiety and anxiety of chaos and catastrophe. I mean, I think that's absolutely overrated, really, because I think the world is always like this. And we have, we're just historically illiterate to think that these are exceptional times because like when yeah you know, when was it not like this when was the world not on fire when was paris not burning like like in the yeah maybe 1914 how about 1933 1939 how well, about there's Vietnam? particular you know? there's particular aspects to this crisis which are sort of global which is different right is it or is it just the you know the advent of technology that makes it transparent that the world is always well, like on fire? nuclear weapons? Is that's a, that's sort of a, that's like hydrogen bombs and things like that are coming. What's about yeah? What about and then also the, the, the you know the eco eco ecological collapse is, is sort of novel. I mean, even if you know there's always been forest fires, but and the fact that it's man made and the fact that it's global and inter you know I I don't know. I, I think there's. But have you heard? I mean, like I know what you're saying, but have you heard of that? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a theory from anthropology, and it's it's called the bottleneck theory. And at some point in human history, when was it? Like three hundred thousand years ago, two hundred five fifty thousand years ago, a human, the human race was so depleted, you know, through environmental catastrophes that there were literally just twenty five thousand or some some of us left. And so we went through this bottleneck on near extinction. And from that, you know, we, we came out on the other side and it's like, yeah, well, maybe we'll come I, out on the other side. I mean, we'll probably come out I mean. on the other side, but we might, we might, millions of people might die. Right. That's probably going to happen. That's, you know, that's what most people would, would say Yeah, again, but it's, it's, when was that not the case? Um, no, maybe it is the case, but, but, but perhaps we should try to prevent it. I don't know. I think some what I want to say, I think you that's know, what the, that's what I'm I, you know, that's what people were, you know, that's what people were talking about at this conference in any case. Yeah. I mean, Sorry, what were you going to say? No, it's also fashionable to be to have like a catastrophe, like an anxiety about catastrophe. But again, think about it when because it's also like a marketing gimmick in some sense. I know I'm not saying that these people in Vermont doing it, but, you know, this kind of doom doomsday uh, prophecy kind of approach to the world. I can see where they're coming from, but I don't know that's the issue. So what's the issue? There is no issue? I mean, no, I'm, just, I'm just being the global, if I would be the devil's advocate, I would say that, you know, maybe you're not looking at a few things. No, I can see the, that climate. You know, mm -hmm. I, I see that, you know, but again, when was the world not on fire give me I one agree. the world's always on fire for sure and yeah. and i think that's that's an inherent quality of the world and yes. it will always be like this and there yeah. is no meaning crisis and there is no world in between it's always like this and i think what the real issue is is to find a way um to to deal with this upcoming technology and and this heightened awareness that we have to not get consumed by it but you know we because we're talking about enlightenment you know to to have this non-dual awareness but to to find like a proper way of align ourselves with the world on fire and yeah. that, well there's always know, a meaning crisis but then there's a particular a, meaning crisis that particular to now you know there's always meaning. Where's the but people were used hungry, starving to death in the past. Now they're obese. You know, people were. It's not a meaning crisis. A meaning crisis, I would say, is when people lack lack some sense of meaning and 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 feel nihilistic. But and, how would they know that if they're not constructing that in a context of meaning? How would they know that they, that they they don't feel a sense of meaning in their life because they're, yeah, because they're you know meaning. because they're doing weird shit like committing suicide and teenagers are, and and uh, and that they don't have any any structures of, of meaning that they their sh school shootings and I don't know there's all kinds of sort of 
let, let me be just a little bit confrontational. If I, mm -hmm. if I say, uh, for us as human beings, there's always meaning. We're meaning-making machines. You can't just turn the machine off and say there's a lack of meaning or a meaning crisis. Even well, if I say, you say, I say that, I say that that's when we feel most alive when we are replete with. I don't say there's a meaning. I say that when we are in a meaning-saturated field, that's when we feel the most alive, and that that life is full of full of meaning. And then, but there's also this sort of gloomy nihilistic depression that is that is that is. Um, it seems to me pretty. All pervasive in, in the in the culture. I get what you're saying, but this is like the the argument against nihilism and solipsism that you can't be, because it's embedded into meaning. Nihilism is meaning. It's like you mean something with that. You know, it's like it's you can't it, you. It's it's a rational concept. It's a it's a way of approaching the world. That is. So, so you find meaning, meaning in meaninglessness. You mean is that what you're saying? But that's no, kind of formative, performative. Contra I mean, that's, no, a that's not what I mean. That's not what I mean. You have on one side, you have the truly meaningless states of consciousness where yeah. you go to deep state meditation, where you devoid yourself of meaning making, you know, where you where you enter the void, let's say, you mm -hmm. know, as a shortcut of argument. But that's the world replete with meaning just in itself. It doesn't I think the meaning, the meaningless state is more like the state of uh stupidity and just sort of pressing That's not what i'm talking no about again what i mean like if you enter a deep state of meditation yeah you're not actualizing meaning because that would be form that would be you know living in the world of duality the non-dual state means you're not conceptualizing anything you are you are you are the, the void in that moment you are the non-duality you're not thinking about thinking. You're not. But you're a, you're you're equating conceptualization with meaning. No, I'm talking about meaning now. Yeah, I know. But you said you're not conceptualizing anything if you're in that state. But normally, in that state of of sort of void, everything feels in incredibly meaningful. It just doesn't have language or 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 um, it doesn't have. It doesn't have a definition, def defined sort of meaning, but meaning you know, is not only defined in, in terms of language. How would you know that it feels meaningful if you uh, wouldn't use a, a meaningful framework to understand what you experience? That's the point. Well, when you're having sex or something, you're just, <sighs> there's lots of meaning. Yeah, but I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about deep state of meditation. Hmm. Well, I think there's a point where, you know, that the void becomes plenitude right so that is an ultimate that's ultimate meaning like you, you when when the apophatic collapse of of structures becomes you become free from thingness you become free from identification you this is incredible freedom but that's that's extremely meaningful um i would think like using the hinduist terminology that would be a lesser samadhi because you know you have like seven samadhis and the more higher ones you get rid of that you but get that, rid that's of yeah but that's that's the, the yeah that's you get rid of there being a meaning but the entire field becomes meaning or not the seven samadhis well, then that's just suicide no it's 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 approaching uh it's 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 uh the dissolution of the very boundary between order and chaos it's like there's no there's no meaning because in the chaos there's no meaning. But that's chaos, not the disillusion of the. You mean you mean just yes. pure chaos? Yes. Yes. It's very hard to explain. You know these kinds of states. Uh, a state in, of pure in, chaos. In, in, in a in a in a. In but a, a state of pure chaos is 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 still an, a creative state because there's still things happening. No, but the point chaos. of the of the notions of the Hinduists is like yeah, you get into this lesser samadhis after 10 10 20 years of study or whatever and then yeah. you you have like this you know thing where where the cognitive processes are you know toned down but you have this feeling of meaningless from meaning from meaning and then you know you kind of transcend that you know so you yeah have... that's the aesthetic state where you just starve yourself to death that's what i was talking about in the first the no no thingness state where you just have no, no desires whatsoever and, and nothing, you know, but you're completely free of the existential uh, anxieties of all, you know, so it's such yeah, a relief. But also of the, of the feeling of meaning, you're completely free of everything. Yeah. 
And so that's what I mean. But but then you have to come back into the world and do stuff. Exactly. Right? And that and what I mean is as as soon as you come back from this very particular rare occurrence of a of a high samadhi, you are always within meaning, and therefore there is no meaning crisis. Even if you say there's a meaning crisis, that's the meaning. Uh huh. So the 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 absence, the, the collapse of all meanings is the meaning okay it's also with that. meaning yes yes yes, mm. yes but that's not what we're talking about when we talk about the meaning crisis we're talking about people people who are addicted to you know sit in front of netflix you know jerking off all day long because they they have no particular meaning in their life like well, they, how, again they have they don't have it they're, they're just they're just they're just plugged into the machine they're mechanical what gurdjieff called mechanical man and how was that different to every other age when humans existed I mean, it was not Netflix, but it was, you know, the the very the different. Bar. It was the bar where the guys went to beat themselves up or, you know, beat their wives or whatever. It's like, you know, people are always addicted. People are always doing. Well, push. I think there was a violence. There was violence before. But now we have this sort of ultimate passivity that is that is turning people into sort of in putting people in vegetative anti-meaning states like zombies right what are zombies zombies are beings without consciousness that just consume and that's why they're that's why the zombie being be, you know you kill a zombie by shooting in the head like because it hasn't it's it's hungry for it's hungry for other beings but it has no consciousness of its own so it's just completely uh, in a mechanical state of con consuming 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 that is the meaning crisis there's no agency. There's no will. There's no dedication. There's no religious superstructure. Uh, you know, there's, you know, families are falling apart. Everything just falls apart. There's, it's just ultimate fragmentation, lack of direction, lack, you know, this is like the meaning crisis. <laughs> I mean, I'm it's just, just arguing. I'm just meaning that. I'm not that saying that there wasn't a meaning crisis before that, but it had a different quality. I think there's a meaning crisis that's specific to each time, actually. Or let's say a denial of humanity, a, den a denial. Uh, you know, every age has its form of denial. We have ours. I completely agree. Yes. Mm. But um, it's not something special. It's just a uh, world. It's Paris is burning. That's what happens all yeah. the time. Oh, OK, well, you. I mean, but the argument would be that it's, it's a sort of world existential right now. That would be the argument that the people would make. The, maybe, the what? maybe that world existential, like where existential risk means you know the in the food system the, the you know the everything everything gets poisoned in a sense and and why again like when was the crisis when when was the burning paris not existential you had you had the plague you had the pestilence you have the spanish flu you had world wars you had a, a 30 year war in europe so when was it not existential well before that Basically, we ate the uh, before it know, became the world war. That's that's what I'm saying. Before it was a world thing. What what's novel is that it's a world thing now. Which probably started around the time of the Thirty Year War, and that was like the beginning of it. And colonialism, and you know, the world crisis when it became world a crisis. world crisis thing. That's that right. that is that's that's modern, right? Isn't it? I'm not saying it, it wasn't a world and it gets more and more of a world crisis, the more interdependent we all become, or it's, it just becomes more and more of a, we become more and more interdependent and enmeshed in each other and becomes more and more of a world meaning crisis. Just like France, France is on fire now, but there are a bunch of Algerians, <laughs> you know, North Africans mostly. And, you know, and then, and then they're not, they're not, they're not French people, <laughs> they're world people on fire but the only difference is that we know this now through the internet because people are bashing others heads, people's heads in like for uh, millennia for people eons. have always been bashing each other's heads in but we're doing this in a world <laughs> on a world scale like it's a worldwide pandemic the black plague was europe yeah, but the spanish flu was kind of a yeah uh, that's the beginning right the beginning of the 20th century that's when the world 
That's when, the, when, when the telegram was invented. That's when it started to become the world. It, it's all related to media, I think. Um, when world exactly. media start, when world communication started happening. Um, I get what that, you're saying, Andrew, but this is this is like uh, you know a difference in scale, but not in principle. Yeah, the scale is the world. The principle is the same for sure. I agree. So, yes, nothing okay. new under the sun. We right. are murder. We are murderous. Uh, you know, we have the potential to be omni. What's the word? Omni destructive or? Um, no, I mean there was just a recent article that we basically ate, you know, our evolutionary competitors to extinction. We were cannibals. We ate the Homo erectus and the what's what's the other guy's name? You know the uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's like no, we we killed them fifty thousand years ago. The Aborigines uh, killed, you know, all the big animals in Australia. Yeah. It's like yeah. we 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 are animals. We are, you know, it's like yeah, yeah. So and I'm just I'm just trying not to buy into this color. That's my own, my only point that I'm trying to make now. That I'm not trying to buy into this catastrophic doom kind of uh the world is in between and 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 it's everything is in crisis there's a yeah world is on fire i agree but our way our way of dealing is in that is not by reinforcing that by using this you know this kind of mind frame but to find a way to use our consciousness to align us proper properly you know yeah. to the fire because if we're getting too close to the fire you know, if we're getting consumed by Twitter and everything, oh no, the world is on, you know, it's like then we get burned. Mm -hmm. And then we get fucked in the ass, you know, so we need a proper distance to the fire. And because that's, you know, what, what we always learned since Prometheus gave us the fire, that we have to have a proper distance. And that's the human project. You know, you have to be, you have to be in the vicinity to get some warmth and to get some information and, you know, all these things, but you also have to keep a distance. Yeah. And, but, well, but yeah. Always... I mean, how do we keep a distance? That's a very interesting question. I mean, keep, keep the right distance so that we're being nourished by the fire and that we don't fall into this, you know, I mean, again, it's, you know, you could, you could go use, use the Girardian thing. It's like, as soon as the scapegoat arises, then people go mad with murder lust. Right. Um, which is happening in Paris at the moment. Uh, so, so the, the only way to, um, according to Gerard, I mean, I'm, I still find Gerard's description of evil to be the most compelling. Right. Right. What is what you know? What the evil that we create is because we have a scapegoat, and then we keep creating scapegoats. And, the, and as soon as we create, and and so the only way out of that cycle of scapegoat is 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 for us to, to take on the role of being the scapegoat ourselves. <laughs> In other words, come out, go ahead. You know, rather than me, you know, reacting or or going into the fire, I allow the I allow myself to be burned. Why would you do that? I don't understand. Why would you? Why would you do that? So that somebody else doesn't have to be burned. It's kind of heroic, right? You say, "Okay, I'll, I'll be the scapegoat. I'll, I'll take the. I'll take the. I'll take the blow." Rather than, rather well, than. Well, Andrew, you do you, and I do me. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit idealistic, but 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 that's no, what we but have I to mean, do. I get say, what okay, saying, okay, I'll go ahead and go ahead and you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fall into the. The murderous frenzy instead i'm gonna okay you know i mean I, I can't do it but i'm going to at least that would be like the heroic path. i get what you're saying but i wonder if the context is correct because like if, if we're talking about paris is burning as a metaphor right yeah and so and so you know we have to we have to have a distance to the fire we, we are yeah i mean like twitter is just a scream fest uh -huh. You know, the mm -hmm. you know, it's like the media is trying to alienate people and to rile them up, and and then you have like even spiritual or philosophical communities that completely buy into these kind of things where, you know, you you hear people say, "Ah, oh, we we have to give more weapons to Ukraine." It's like really, that's that's your pristine philosophical approach. You know, it's like. 
that, that can't be the path that you know that we putting oil into the fire you know it's like we it's like we have to have a proper distance to you know the world that is always burning and because yeah, we always jump in and try to fix things right you know so uh, there's a, yeah there's a way in which we have to do like you know the word cathexis there's catharsis no, catharsis is like like we, we we allow ourselves to explode into catharsis right get it out right. so we we have a catharsis of violence yeah cathexis is holding it in keeping it and not reacting that's much harder yeah it's a story yeah absolutely that, that's what i'm talking about in terms of right taking the scapegoat on yourself right okay okay yeah that makes sense mm. that's what i that's i didn't perhaps express it very well They're not doing some stupid naive thing but um but uh right so you know i think i think that's we have to understand that the state of war is like it's right here all the time you know it's ready yeah. to it's it's in every it's always there and the fact that it's not that we're not going to war that we're the that it's not burning for a little while we have this moment of peacefulness is kind of like miraculous because it's it's about to happen again uh-huh and, and you know what well, I, I think i think it is a dangerous situation right now in the world because because of that because because of the 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 the, the level of stupidity and the and the and the danger of and the, the scale of 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 the potential destruction yeah, you know, are you familiar, we just had yeah, knives and swords and, and even guns and cannons were not much compared to what we have now I mean we, and then when the AI start to create weapons I mean it's unthinkable the apocalypse right there's an unthinkable apocalypse you know right around the corner but it's again it's always like this yes for 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 us for but not in, on such a large in such a large um and are you familiar, Andrew? Andrew you you, you studied a little bit Tarot and Alistair Crowley. I mean, mm -hmm. are you familiar with that? I, I really like that notion. So, in the in the book of law, in this in this book of Crowley's, he talks about the double appearance of of horrors, right? And so he appears in two forms, and he's a god a god of war by yeah. the definition of the book. But there are two expressions of this. And the first one is, well, to go at war, to be a uh, hopakrat, you know, to mm -hmm. raho quid. Yeah. And so you are the one who engages in, you participate in the act of war. You know, you yeah. participate in the ma machinations of the world, let's say. You you, are, you become the... You, but then the other, the other kind of um, expression is the, the silent child. You know, which would be Hopakrat. It's like the child that has a distance to all of it. That is, you know, um, in this you know state of observe, you know, observation in the state of harmony. It's like so, and and I think, I think what what that allegory kind of means, or like kind of um, provokes us to to think about, is that you know the issue is not the world on fire. The issue is consciousness and how we relate to that, you know, to know when to engage and when to disengage, you know, mm -hmm. and to, and to, and to, uh, cultivate, you know, fr from a consciousness perspective, the right way of doing this, you know, when to, when to go to war and, and when not to, because it's like, you know, you have to, again, you have to also cultivate the fire. You, you can't, uh make it too big but you don't yeah. want it to get out also you know and yeah. so you have so because the, the 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 fire is in deeply in deeper in deep relationship to the way you are acting i mean take it as it is you, you take a, a campfire if you don't care about it it will go out or in the in the wrong circumstances the fire will spread and so mm. you, you are a caretaker of the fire and that would be the right approach to the world that you're a caretaker of the fire you can't let it go out but you can't go, go let it go too big yeah and this is what we kind of have to learn well and then there's also the notion of sacrifice right um which is very interesting i mean um i was just listening to david smith talk about the sacrifice at the temple you know the temple of solomon and this the the the, the, the temple was destroyed twice and uh, what the temple was for was for for an animal sacrifice 
right? So you take the animal and, 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 and the blood and the bo- and you, you, you make a fire and you offer it to the gods. What you're doing is you're giving your energy to that instead of war. <laughs> right. You know, that's the idea. That's like, okay, the gods will be okay with us. We'll be peaceful for a while. But um, but 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 there's still this this kind of sacrifice, and when the temple was destroyed, then the whole rabbinical tradition began, which which is which was instead of offering a, a critter, you know, a creature, a living creature, a, 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 a scapegoat to the right. fire, you you offer your your um, your life energy and or, or your prayers or or you know in in, in uh, you know or samadhi or you, you offer you offer your concentrated energy. Um, this is what the religious practice is uh, and so so it's it's not just it's not you have to sacrifice something to the fire as well but you have to make sure that you it's the right sacrifice I get comp- okay so andrew what is the right sacrifice because you can't just kill animals or create a critter or whatever it's like what is the sacrifice now yeah well i think it's i think it's practice for you know in, in my sense it's like it's like it's like meditation you're sacrificing your time you're giving up your energy uh, and you know, concentrated e- energy to something. I don't think that's the way. <clears throat> something that's that's greater than than your own. Um, I mean, that's not the way, but but I think. But even the Sufis would say that they would say that the Sufis would say that you know you need to create samadhi or else war happens, right? If you don't, if you're not, if you're if you just live unconsciously, we just go into war, right? That's what we do. We just, you know, if we just live unconsciously, so it's consciousness. Based. I mean, consciousness is a crappy word these days, but attention. That's what you sacrifice. You sacrifice your attention to the most sublime, which is the religious. Um, I, I, I don't agree. All right. What, I, what, 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 what is your answer to that question then? Let me, uh, let me answer this by, by giving you a question do you do you think that the world is on fire uh the world is on fire yeah and then you have moments where no 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 no, no, no. okay no no okay so do you think you can i mean like wilbur uses the thing between the map and the territory right Mm -hmm. and you're always within the map you will never have access to the territory and the 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 map is always an approximation of what's out there but mm-hmm. as soon as you talk as soon as you have philosophies you're always talking about the map not the territory it's it's a very important distinction that robert anton wilson and leary and wilbur and all these people kind of always point to so do you think the world is on fire no our description of the world yes but the world itself that's a whole different kind of thing and i think what we have to sacrifice is our belief that we are describing the world as it is because there is no is right because that's that was what all the wisdom traditions and leary and wilson and wilbur always talk about it's like there is no is there is like we have our descriptions but if we treat our descriptions of the world as as a matter of fact then we are confusing the map and the territory and then we are adding to the fire but if well, you i think we put our descriptions just into like the one fire sentence. we put we put our descriptions into the fire that's what the sacrifice is exactly yeah so i agree with that but that is what i'm talking about because that right. is somebody okay. it's what your description falls away and you you put it into the fire you put right. your representation into the fire, right? Of okay. go- you yeah, know yeah. the golem, right? Yes. The golem uh, is 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 your representation, is your, you know, your ego fixated, you know, limited, you know, stupid, you know, whatever the monster. You you put it in the fire. You make a sacrifice of the golem, right? <laughs> which you know, which is which is which I is not agree. not yes. the real. No, it's your it's 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 your it's your it's your representation of the real. And then you have a glimpse and an access access to the real, right? Right. Then you keep doing that until 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 you know. Uh, I guess you just keep doing that until you have a more continuous um, access to the to 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 not the real as a representation, but the real as as it presents itself as it speaks to you. I mean, it's like what I mean. It's like an, the sacrifice is a thing of Saturn, you know, the, the idea that Saturn sacrifices his own children, and uh-huh. and what's what's the meaning of the sacrifices? You know, it's like 
what what do we mean by we're sacrificing our own children so we, it's, it's exactly that we're sacrificing our own descriptions our own books our own ideas about what the world is in order to heal the world it's like all these philosophies they're they're nice and dandy and interesting and you know but at some point you know um at least n if not to get to, to attach to it we have to sacrifice yes yeah, it's, it's it's just a it's just a model it's just an approximation it's it's a way of you know align yourself well, but you sacrificing but your you children shouldn't believe in it too 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 deeply to your own think uh, thought children yeah you say thought children but then the children that would be what is the most precious to you right you yeah, mean so, real children so no no i mean just what a child your child is could be a thought child could be an actual a child, brain child could, whatever yeah mm -hmm. what, whatever is most most precious to you right is your child right. Yeah. So that's why, you know, that's why, uh, that's why you have to sacrifice your child in the sense that, that because that's what life is, you know, you, you, you are, what is most precious is being sacrificed anyway, you know, so it's like you, you, you join that conscious process. Right. I completely yeah, like agree, you, yes. You mm -hmm. become part of that conscious process. So, so, uh, so again, yeah, that's, it's just, it's just, it's just profound because, because because arbitrary sacrifice is the worst thing in the world, right? That is the scapegoat mechanism, just sacrificing some animal that, you know, for nothing. It even works it for a while. It appeases the god because you've given energy to the god and so you're okay for a while and then and then, then just another animal comes and you're you get caught in a in a you know in a very bloody game. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. uh but uh you know we are, i've read in another uh, in another book you know that it's you know that it's always easy to be a psychologist for other people but given that you have the same problem it's very hard to diagnose it on yourself because you don't have the critical distance to yourself to know you know uh what the solution to a given problem is you know, if you talk to somebody else, it always seems easy what the other person has to do. Yeah. And it's the same thing with the, mm -hmm. with the, with the, with the sacrifice, because it's, you know, talking about somebody else or, you know, it's always easy. Yeah. You have to, because you have the distance, you know, it's, you, you should mm -hmm. sacrifice that, but to know that for yourself, what would be the proper sacrifice? You know, what is, what is your proper child that you have to sacrifice? That's, that's very hard. That's very complicated. Yeah, it's also you can't figure it out on your own. I think. I think you need to figure it out in a in a in a context. I don't know. Maybe you could figure it out on your own. I don't know, but I wonder if you can. I wonder if it, it needs to be revealed to you through. Like it's it's the it's the village that teaches you that what it is. More fundamentally, than you the, this kind of solitary idea yeah maybe or at least the village is going to speed up the process of you learning to understand it through being you know having a lot of mirrors around so you try something oh, and yeah. then you get you get you get feedback right if you just if you're just in if you're just trying stuff on your own you don't get very far because you don't get feedback you know um, I mean, it's like the weird thing with uh, with Abraham, was it? No, who who he heard the voice of God to sacrifice his son. Yeah, and then so he was like, kind of, you know, and coming back to the idea of hacking enlightenment. So, and in a way, he was hacking God because between he was like determined to kill his son, and God was like, "Oh no, what the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> I, yeah, he just went right ahead and did it. He had no hesitation uh you know you read it and he just you know because he's so dedicated to god god tells me to go kill my son he just went right ahead and did it and yeah, he even he lied didn't. to even lied to jacob he said oh but yeah we're going on a but, nice camping trip yeah but he didn't do it in the end or did he he did it but but he was stopped yeah but that's what i mean by an angel he, yeah but he was he was, he was just right about to do he it was but then the angel god in a kind of way he was bluffing god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by being so by pretending to be but maybe he was so determined but in the end, the angel or God was saying, "Oh no, 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 no! I, I, I didn't mean it like that." 
And so I, I find it kind of funny, actually. It's interesting because you know? I used to think of that story as like, God's an asshole. Like, yeah. fuck God. Why would God do that? <laughs> what a prick. <laughs> like, what a jerk. I mean, give me a break. I don't care how, you know, what a psych psychopath God is. Yeah. And if you read all the stories in the Old Testament, the, um, he is a psychopath, this, this Yahweh fellow. But um, but it's actually that at that time, sac child sacrifice was very common. Um, and so so actually that God stopped the child. The, the, what's radical is that God actually stopped the sacrifice. Yeah. He stopped the scapegoat mechanism. Yeah. Um, and that's, I guess, more the more proper proper way to, to read that that story. Um, I, I once was listening to this rabbi who was who was sort of expounding on a very radical and bizarre form of Judaism called Sabbateanism. I don't know if you know the Sabbateans. No. Um, uh, the Sabbateans follow this Messiah in the the, the like I think it was the 14th century or something. Um, uh who who was supposed to be the jewish messiah he was the jewish messiah and except that he was he was except that that he uh converted to uh islam <laughs> um uh, because he had to or he would they would have killed him and so at one point all over europe the jews had met had found the messiah and this was him it was like i think like half of half of europe european jews believed that this was the messiah had come and this was, but there are still people in Turkey who believe uh, that he that th this was the Jewish Messiah. Um, Zevi, I can't remember his name. Sabbatean, the Sabbateans, and the newest, and what, and so so what they do is they convert to other religions. Like he he converted to Muslim. So so this guy uh, who I spoke to, who is a neo Sabbatean, he converted to Catholicism. He converted to Hinduism. He converted to Buddhism. He converted to all the different religions to steal the holiness from each religion. <laughs> so the the idea is to steal the the holy from the shells of the religion, which was, um, which 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 bound up this energy, um, and. Uh, uh, even though he remained while remaining a, a Sabbatean uh, Jew, um, but uh, this guy had the theory that God was actually, you know, God was schizophrenic. God was. Oh, okay. The idea is God is divided. God has the problem, not Job, but God has the problem. So, yeah. so, 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 Job was an innocent victim of God. <laughs> so, Job's job is to fix God, to heal God, to heal God who is. God is 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 divided, is broken. Um, so so uh, there's much more, you know, in the Jewish tradition. There's much more relationship between like God and the human, right? It's like God is not this perfect thing. This so he was like Thanos, basically, you know, bringing the different infinity stones of the realms together to, uh, you know, steal the the core of everything and. Well, well, God was kind of God had a problem that needed to be fixed by he, and our job as humans was to fix God, not to be saved. We need to save God. Have you seen Endgame, Avengers Endgame? No. Yeah, well, maybe you should. Maybe I should see Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into movies. I'm trying to clear my mind of movies. I, I stopped watching movies and I started to dream again. Um, I'm watching movies because I don't want to dream. I understand you. Yes, when I look at my <laughs> dreams, I think maybe I should go back to the movies. That's just a that's a horror show right there. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But dreams give you little clues about where you're at. So yeah. sometimes they're worth paying attention to. Yeah, you don't watch any movies anymore. I, I'm 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 I just go through periods where I I have to stop watching movies because. I have an addictive personality, so I tend to binge on them and I say, okay, no, I got to stop for six months. Right. So that's what I'm doing right now. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's pretty good. I, I put my TV in the garage for mm. a while. Also because my, because, uh, cause my children tend to, and it's very easy to just put on the TV for your children and then, then you, then you, then you don't have to be a father. Yeah. So. Well, as Larry David would say, it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know. Mm. <laughs>